Welcome to the Abolitionist Roundtable with your hosts, Del, Phil, and Janice. Come on in and take a seat. You're invited to join the roundtable. Call 734-822-1600 to get into the conversation. And now, your hosts, Del Marsh, Phil Stargell, and Janice Daniels. Well, good morning, America. Yes, you, you have tuned in to the Abolitionist Roundtable, the show of freedom, the American People's Radio Program, the program of conservatism. You have reached the Abolitionist Roundtable with your host, Del Marsh, uh, and I'm here in the studio with the, uh, the with the people's mayor, uh, uh, one of the uh, the greatest mayors uh, that's going to go down in history as one of the greatest mayors uh, in the history of Troy, Mayor Daniels. Good morning. Good morning, Mayor. And Phil is on assignment this morning, so uh, he said that, that you know if he get a chance, he might uh, try to uh, just call in and and let us know some of the things that he's doing right now. Mayor Daniels, uh, breaking news this um, this week. Um, you know, it's something that, that just kind of shocked everyone. But uh, John Boehner resigned. I know. I feel like crying a tear of joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you notice he did his little cry again. Of course he did. Yes. yes. And, and I understand he's a very uh, sensitive guy. But but right now we don't need a sensitive guy uh, to take that uh, position. Uh, Mayor Daniels, uh, that this is a position that uh, we feel that I, I know I feel myself that a lot of things that uh, th- that uh, the president has obfuscated around Congress uh, is because of uh, the the weakness. He's seen the weakness and and the Democrat Party has seen the weakness in Boehner, and so that position, folks. I mean, we really need a this this last year and a few months. We need a real strong person in that position. Because the heart of the nation right now is uh, we're teetering on, on the edge right now of brink. And, and this is what this administration want, uh, for us to be teetering on the edge. And, folks, we have to make sure, we have to call um, the uh, you know, whoever your congressman and your senator is. We have to let them know th- what our f- and share what your feelings is about this particular um, uh, subject that we have to have someone there strong in that position, very strong. Did you have you start thinking about uh, the type of person or the person that you like to see in that position? Well, I actually have, Dell, and uh, quite frankly, from my perspective, we need someone who is truly a conservative. Mm-hmm. John Boehner hasn't voted conservatively since about 2009. That's mm-hmm. when he started flip-flopping. And then, uh, quite frankly, I go to conservativereview.com yes. to study the issues and the presidential candidates and okay. the scorecard of all the legislators. And John Boehner has some very bad votes for the past three or four or five years. Uh, it, but one of the worst votes that I think he took, well, I don't know if you can say worst yes. because they are all so hugely anti-American, quite mm-hmm. frankly. But he voted to to uh, to bail out foreign countries to the tune of $1.8 billion when he agreed to a spending resolution in 2009. But that's an aside that maybe we could yes. talk about a little bit later okay. if we have time. But I was looking at Louis Gohmert, number one, mm-hmm. as a potential replacement. He's from Texas District 1, Saini. and he's I've been in the it. House for 10 years, mm-hmm. so he understands the lay of the land, and I think mm-hmm. that's kind of important with a position of yes. this import. Uh, but he has a 94% conservative rating. on conservative review, and 100% rating from national right to life. Those two things are very important to me, conservatism and your position on life. uh, Absolutely. So he would be Mm -hmm. one person that I would be very interested in in supporting, Mm -hmm. and another person would be Jim Jordan. He's been in the House for eight years. Again, That's a a, a, he knows the lay of the land, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's from Ohio's District 4. He has a 92% conservative rating in conservative review and a 100% rating for national uh, right to life. So those two men are the people that I would like to see promoted to be Speaker of the House. Okay. All right. All right. Well, she she she, she just spoke it. Uh, I, I noticed that right at the time that um, uh, this is from uh, Politico. You know, of course, you know, the, the liberals are going to try to pick a person for us. Uh, it's important for us to pick our person, but one of the, uh, the names I, I noticed that they keep coming up is um, uh, over and over whenever I, I look 
is um, is McCarthy. What do you think about? I think that uh, we would be replacing Frick with Frack. Okay. All right. So it would be the same old thing. Same old, same, same old. Same old thing coming. All right. Well, here I want you to before we get into uh, um, that was the breaking news. We want to we wanted to make that announcement, but uh, I want to let you know there's a couple of ways that you can listen to the Abolitionist Roundtable. Uh, you can go to artofmichigan.com. Again, that's artofmichigan.com. Uh, right on the right hand side, you'll see a, a little black uh, uh, Wham logo. You can click on that, and it says "Listen Live." And so you can you can if so if you have to get out the house and you want to keep listening to the show, go to uh, Art of Michigan, ArtofMichigan.com. Click on that Wham logo. Uh, second, if you wanna if you wanna if you wanna listen to the show later on during the day, you can also go to that ArtofMichigan.com. You can click on uh, on our shows, and there's an archive of shows. So you can you can listen to this show later on today. Uh, and I, I was doing something. Uh, you can go to YouTube. You can YouTube Abolitionist Roundtable of Michigan, and all the shows are all come up. So Abolitionist Roundtable of Michigan, and you can pull up all the shows. Uh, in tune. Intune. You can go to Intune. That's on the website also. So you can go to the website, click on it, Intune, and you can listen to the show. And uh, uh, while you're there, we have a petition right up at the top. It says, uh, stop the invasion, this petition. We want you to sign that petition, folks, because this is something that we're going to talk uh, about this morning, about this uh, this mass invasion and and before we get into that, but we're going to let uh, uh, Donald Trump set the table uh, because remember a couple of weeks ago was a question, you know, it was a it was, you know, somebody in the audience that came up and and pointed out that Obama was a Muslim and and uh, and and, you know, we and so on and so forth. But we're going to we're going to listen to uh, something from an exchange between Donald Trump and and George Stephanopoulos, then we're gonna let uh, we're gonna let the president himself defend whether his position is uh, more Muslim or more Christian, more Muslim. Now here, let's let's just go back for a minute. If if we just look at the last six years, we can see that he's favored Islam more. I mean, he's always. Every time I look around, he's defending Islam. Every time I look around, he's he's saying that J, you know that uh, uh, that ISIS is a JV. There's not really a real threat. Matter of fact, here before before let me. I, I know I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but here I want to just point out something. It says that, uh, and this is from uh, the Daily Beast. It says Obama brass pressured us to downplay ISIS threat. You know, the U.S. intelligence analysts keep uh, saying that the American-led campaign against ISIS is not going well. They, this is what they're telling us. It's not going well. And so we see this influx of people. You know, we if we all turn on the TV, we, we see just hundreds and thousands of people that's fleeing Syria, uh, Iraq, and uh, and and um, and uh, in Baghdad, we, we we see hundreds of thousands. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Afghanistan. We see them uh, fleeing these countries, but we notice that uh, that he asked the Stephanopoulos asked uh, Donald Trump, was he a Muslim? And then this is just you know consistent with the president's his, his what his what his assignment is what i believe what he's you know what he's trying to advance in this country and and then he want to downplay the isis threat so how why would you now you're a christian why would you want to downplay this and uh, there's still questions about your faith but you want to downplay the 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 you know isis and we see this mass invasion so what people would would think then wait a minute is this is this consistent with what it, his end game is is to import 
or import all these people and flood the United States. So we're going to uh, get into that in just a minute. But so let's go back for a minute. Oh, this is going to be good, folks. So again, oh, one more thing. I want to make an announcement. The fall, our fifth annual fall group tour uh, at the Holocaust Memorial Center in Farmington Hills. That's going on uh, in, in, uh, in, in November, November 6th, Friday, November 6th at noon. If we don't, if we don't see what the face of evil does, when men are in power, uh, so that we can, that's why it's important that we get somebody that's in that position at Boehner Head. We have to get a strong conservative. If this next year and a half is going to be the most, we can see right now, folks, that this administration is doing everything. Well, let me, let me, let me ask a question real quick. I, I'm all over everywhere because I'm so excited. Matter of fact, go ahead. Let me hear. Let's hear the exchange of uh, Donald Trump with Stepanopoulos, and we're going to set the table, and we're going to keep going. I think those polls are all coming out today and tomorrow. Let's get into this controversy that's come up over the last couple of days. I saw your tweets yesterday where you say you didn't have a moral responsibility when that questioner got up and said those things about President Obama. But this is getting a lot of attention in part because you've raised questions like this in the past. So for the record, was President Obama born in the United States? Well, you know, I don't get into it, George. I talk about jobs. I'm talking about the military. I don't get into it. I mean, they ask that question, and I just want to talk about the things because, frankly, uh, it's of no longer interest to me. We're beyond that, and it's just something I don't talk about. I want to talk about the military. I want to talk about the vets and how badly they're treated. I want to talk about jobs. I don't get into that. George. Well, the way to get beyond it is to answer yes or no. Do you well, believe that's, you're... that's possible, but I don't get into it, and mind. I just don't talk about it. So, and, and even though you've raised questions, you've investigated in the past you're still well you know people thought i should have defended some people thought i should have defended the president in terms of the question that was asked the other night and my attitude is would he have done that for me if somebody said that about me and you know he's been uh, he could, he's very capable of defending himself believe me so we'll see what happens but uh, i think the tweets really covered it very well and very accurately somebody said they were excellent they covered the subject and i actually it was very interesting because i got in hot water over not saying anything the first time it's ever happened to me. I, I, I didn't get, say anything. 